to design. So, the problem is a rectangular reinforced concrete beam is simply supported on two machinery wall of 230 mm thick and 6 meter apart center to center. The beam is carrying an imposed load of 15 kilo Newton per meter. Design the beam with all necessary checks. Use M25 concrete and FE 415 grade steel. So, from this question, uh, first of all, to understand this, we uh, have to draw a basic line diagram uh, for longitudinal section. Uh, to understand the problem look in your screen you can see the line diagram basic line diagram of longitudinal section of beam so uh, as per the question we don't know the depth the width uh, that all we have to um, uh, design with few assumptions and codal provisions but what do you know we know that center to center distance of the beam is 6 meter you can see here what is center to center distance. Next, uh, the thickness of machinery wall. This is supported, uh, simply supported beam, beam and supported uh, upon uh, ma machinery wall. The thickness of one machinery wall is 230 mm. So, from the uh, middle, from the center of this machinery wall to the center of another machinery wall, this distance is center to center distance. So, uh, there is a term that is called bearing. Bearing means half of left support and half of right support. That means the total length of one support is one bearing. Which is 230 by 2 and 230 by 2 total is 230. That is the uh, uh, that is one bearing. So, and uh, to, uh, to find out clear uh, span, uh, we have to uh, deduct this one bearing from uh, center to center distance. So, uh, let us start the problem. Uh, so, uh, let us check out the solution. Uh, as I told earlier, one bearing is 230 mm. Why 230 mm? I have already discussed. So, that is equal to 0 0.23 meter. Now, effective span uh, that is L suffix E is equals to 6 meter that is also given that means 6000 mm clear span is equals to effective span minus one bearing so that is equals to uh, 5.77 meter now imposed load or live load that is also given that is 15 kilo newton per meter now fck is 25 MPa or Newton per millimeter square as uh, we have to calculate we have to design for um, uh, M25 grade concrete and Fy for Fe 415 steel is 415 MPa. Next uh, section assumption next part is section assumption. So, first assume a trial depth of effective length by 12 that is the that is our assumption so that is equals to 500 mm so uh, first of all an overall depth and total depth of 500 mm we are assumed and width is 250 mm that is also assumption so now our um, assumed cross section is 250 mm by 500 mm uh, Let us assuming uh, effective cover is 50 mm. So, effective depth is overall depth minus effective cover. So, that is equals to 450 mm. Now, next step is span consideration. For span consideration, what we have to consider that is written in clause number 22.2 of IS 456 2000. If you uh, go to the code you can see uh, at clause number 22.2 uh, you find it this assumption so effective span is least of the following center to center support that is already given is 6000 mm 
see or we can say 6 meter and clear span plus effective depth that is equals to 5.77 meter plus 0 0.45 meter that is equals to 6.22 so list of the following that means effective span we have to consider 6 meter so we have to design for 6 meter effective span now next step next step is design factored load that is w and factored moment that is mu so uh, first of all we have to calculate the self weight of beam so uh, cross section of the beam multiplied by unit weight of rcc that is equals to self weight so cross section is 0 0.5 meter into 0 0.25 meter that is the cross section into that is multiplied by 25 that is unit weight of rcc that is equals to uh, 3.125 kN per meter and imposed load is 15 kN uh, per meter that is already given so total load is 18.125 kN per meter so we have to um, multiply the partial safety factor 1.5 with the total load 18.125 so the design load or factored load wu is 27.2 kN per meter and from the factored load we have to calculate the factored moment that is mu is equals to wl square by 8 as the formula uh, for the simply supported beam that is equals to 27.2 that is factored load into 6 that is effective length square by 8 so uh, the value is 122.4 kN meter if we convert this to con to convert this to newton uh, mm uh, so we have to multiply uh, with 10 to the power 6 so the value of factored moment is 122.4 into 10 to the power 6 newton mm now next consideration is depth consideration so for uh, depth consideration to find out the required depth we have to follow the steps whatever calculated in your screen so uh, x u max by g the value for x u max by g is 0 0.48 as you know we have to find out from uh, this from uh, just below clause number 38.1 there is a note there is a small table uh, from there uh, for a 415 still the value is 0 0.48 and now uh, we have to uh, put the formula uh, in the equation so equation for limiting value that is mu is equal to 0 0.36 uh, xu max by g within bracket 1 minus 0 0.42 xu max by g bracket close multiplied by b g square into fck and you know uh, we get the formula from nhg is 456 2000 uh, and where is the formula actually is in code uh, to know this uh, i have uh, um, I give the link of this that video in my description box. You may go to that video to find out that where is the formula actually comes from from NXG. I have described the NXG on that um, video in my previous videos. So uh, now um, the value of MU we know the just put the value that is 122.4 uh, multiplied by 10 to the power 6 that is equals to 0 0.36. And the value for x u max by g is 0 0.48 within bracket 1 minus 0 0.42 uh, multiplied by 0 0.48 that is the value of x u max by g bracket close multiplied by uh, considered uh, as assumed uh, b that is 250 now we have to find out uh, from this equation the required depth so d is unknown here multiplied by 25 that is fck so um, so from this equation uh, required depth g required is equals to 377 so we have already provided the effective date 450 mm so uh, 377 is less than 450 mm hence the section is safe if the required depth value is greater uh, than the than our provided depth then we have to redesign it but here uh, but here the uh, depth is safe our given depth is safe so um, as uh, d is more than required balance section the section is under reinforced okay. 
uh, as you know as per IS 456 uh, 2000 NXG um, over reinforced design never be designed in the limited method so that should be under reinforced uh, so this section is under reinforced now we have to design so um, if uh, if we will uh, provide 20 mm dia tension bar and 8 mm dia stirrup and 20 mm clear cover okay this will we provide and adopted um, capital D that is to overall depth is 500 mm and width is 2 to 50 mm. So now the actual effective depth is equals to overall depth that is 500 minus 20 that is clear cover minus 8 that is stirrup minus 20 by 2 that is center of cross-sectional area of reinforcement bar so that is equals to 462 mm so now next step is area of steel required we have to find out uh, area of steel required so the formula that we use for this first of all is mu is equals to 0 0.87 fy into ast into d within bracket 1 minus Fy into AST by B into D into FCK. The formula comes from NXG. As you see here, reference is NXG of IS 456 2000. And exact position of this formula in IS code that is de described in my previous lecture. And uh, in description box, you may find the link. Okay, uh, so from this equation, we have to find out area of steel that is AST. We know mu the uh, factored uh, moment that is 122.4 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 that is equals to 0 0.87 fy is 415 into area of steel that we have to find out into d that is 462 within bracket 1 minus 415 that is fy into ast that we have to find out by b that is 250 into effective depth d that is 462 into 25 that is fck so from uh, this equation we may find out the value of area of steel required that is 833 mm square so this amount of steel is required for this section but now we have to check the minimum area of steel required for this section and the maximum area of steel required for this section so the considerations the assumption how we can find out the minimum area of steel and maximum area of steel that is written in IS 456 2000 so we have to do it by the codal provision so in clause number 26.5.1.1 we may find out the formula for minimum area of steel required so let's go to that clause and from this clause uh, just below um, uh, the table below uh, table 16a we may find out the uh, max maximum area of reinforcement required so uh, first of all uh, let's go to um, is 456 uh, clause number 26.5.1.1 and uh, uh, we uh, let's find out the minimum area of uh, steel required and maximum area of steel required. After that, we uh, we will back to uh, this uh, note, the solution. Okay, so let's go to code. In your screen, you can see um, IS code just above 26.5.1.2. That means in 26.5.1.1, the formulas are given. The first formula just below the table, AS by BD equal to 0 0.85 by fy from this equation we may find the minimum area of steel and for maximum area of steel uh, just in point b c, uh, c if you can see here maximum reinforcement the maximum area of tension reinforcement shall not exceed 0 0.04 b into d so these are the uh, two formulas we have uh, that means uh, the required um, area of steel what we have uh, find out uh, from the equation that should be lie between these two so uh, let's 
check and go to the note okay uh, see here in your screen minimum required area of steel a s the formula is a s is equals to 0 0.85 bd by fy the formula is, we have just seen in is code right so 0 0.85 multiplied by b that is 250 multiplied by uh, effective jet small d that is 462 by fy is 415 so area of steel is that means minimum required area of steel is 236 mm square that is less than whatever we um, have find out that is 833 mm square hence safe in this condition now let us check maximum area of steel so maximum area of steel we have just seen in IS code the formula is 0 0.04 b into g so 0 0.04 into 250 into 500 that is equals to 5000 mm square that is greater than 833 mm square the AST required we have find out so in this condition also uh, area of steel required is safe now area for 20 mm dia bar we have to find out this uh, first to find out the number of bars so first area of 20 mm dia bars that is um, you know pi by 4 into d square cross sectional area so pi by 4 into 20 square that is 3 or 14 mm square so number of bar required is total area of steel required 833 by cross sectional area of one bar that is 314 so 833 by 314 that is equals to 2.65 obviously we can't provide 2.65 number of bars uh, but uh, so we have to increase the uh, value we may provide three number of bars so if we provide three number of bars uh, then, then provided area of steel is increased so 3 into 314 that is cross sectional area of one bar that is equals to 942 mm square so next step is check for deflection for deflection checking we have to satisfy a condition the condition depends upon length to depth ratio so length and depth whatever provided in this problem that is our length to depth ratio provided and as per IS code there is a maximum limit of length to depth ratio so the condition is length to depth ratio must be greater than length to depth provided so we may find out easily length to depth uh, provided with the help of the values we have already find out now how to find out length to depth ratio maximum for that we have to go to clause number 23.2.1 and we have to check figure 4 also let's go to ice code let's check clause number 23.2.1 you may see in clause, clause 23.2.1a the basic values of span to effective depth ratio man, means uh, length to effective depth ratio the, uh, there are th uh, three uh, uh, values are given uh, depends upon support condition cantilever simply supported and continuous there are uh, three values so in this problem we are using simply supported so span to effective depth ratio that means l by d is equals to 20 for this problem and we have to multiply this with a factor called modification factor you may see it in point c and to find out the modification factor we get the value from uh, figure number four so let's go to figure number four now, in figure number four look in this graph in x-axis there is percentage of tension reinforcement in y-axis there is modification factor what we have to find out ultimately and this curves line these curves are the values of fs so depending upon the percentage of steel and value of fs we have to find out the modification factor which we have to multiply with span to depth ratio to get the maximum span to depth ratio span to effective depth ratio so to find out uh, fs the formula is given just below the uh, graph look fs is equals to 0 0.58 into fy multiplied by 
area of cross section of steel required that means AST required by area of cross section of steel provided that means AST provided so we have to solve out uh, uh, this problem with the help of uh, this formula and we have to find out the value of FS and percentage of steel with the help of these two we have to find out modification factor so let's solve it out so first of all we have to find out the percentage of steel it is very easy AST area of steel by cross section BD into 100 uh, that is equals to 100 into AST is uh, 942 by B is 250 multiplied by D is 462 that is equals to 0 0.8 percent okay uh, now uh, FS is equals to 0 0.5 FY AST required by AST provided so 0 0.58 into FY is 415 into AST required is 833 by AST provided is 942 that is equals to 212 MPa. So from figure 4 of IS 456-2000 we have to find out the value of modification factor with the help of the graph and with the help of interpolation method. So for uh, FS is equals to 212 MP and percentage of steel 0 0.8 we have to find out the value so let's check the figure so in this figure in the graph uh, we have to find out uh, for percentage of steel 0.8 look on x axis 0 then 0, 0 0.4 then 0 0.8 0 0.8 is given in the line let's check for fs fs is 212 for our problem but 212 is not given here here is given FS 190 and given FS 240 so we have to find out uh, the value for um, uh, a percentage of steel 0 0.8 and FS 190 and for FS 240 because SF2, FS uh, 212 is lies between these two lines so if we find out these two values for FS 190 and FS 240 we may interpolate the value of modification factor so um, let's uh, see the, for 0 0.8 the line um, crossed with the curve of fs 190 approx at modification factor 1.3 and uh, for fs 240 um, zero, uh, percentage of steel 0 0.8 it is approx this is 0 0.8 and this is 1.2 that means uh, this is 1 so this is 1 point something let's see the notes what is written what I have already um, assumed for this this is actually approximate value because direct value is uh, not possible to find out from this graph but we have to take approximate values so let's go to the note and check the value for 240 and 190 what is the value of modification factor from this graph okay uh, so we find out uh, the uh, value of modification factor is 1.3 for fs 190 and percentage of steel 0 0.8 and value of modification factor 1.08 for fs 240 and percentage of steel 0 0.8 so 212 fs 212 is lies between um, fs 190 and fs 240 so let's interpolate and uh, find out the value of modification factor for FS 212. There are two methods. You may apply any of this. Uh, left side is conventional method and right side is uh, formulated method. So um, uh, let's check. Uh, so modification factor, uh, if we check the right side, modification factor is equal to 1.30 within bracket 1.30 minus 1.08 by 240 minus 190 as it is lies between this multiplied by 212 minus 190 so the value is 1.21 so 1.21 is the modification factor for FS 212 so now uh, to find out L by D max span to effective ratio maximum 
uh, for um, simply supported beam we have already seen in IS code that is 20 and we have to multiply with the modification factor modification factor is 1.21 we have already find out so uh, L by D max that is equals to 24.2 now let's check um, length to depth span to depth ratio provided L by D provided L is 6000 um, mm and uh, D is 462 effective depth is 462 mm that is equal to 12.9 that means L by G maximum is greater than L by G provided hence it is okay for deflection okay so it is satisfied the deflection check let's go to next step next step is design for shear we have to design shear also for shear we have to provide reinforcement and that is called stirrup also shear reinforcement also or stirrup so first of all we have to find out the shear force shear force um, is denoted by vu is equal to uh, wu into le by 2 and that means wl by 2 we know the formula so wu is 27.2 we have already find out and there is multiplied by effective length that is 5.77 by 2 that is equal to 78.5 kN uh, that, that is equal to 78,500 N so from this we have to find out the shear stress because we have to design uh, this uh, uh, for shear stress uh, we have to provide reinforcement for that so nominal shear stress tau V is equals to VU by BD we know that formula otherwise you may find this formula from clause number 40.1 in IS 456 2000 also this is already written in this so VU is 78,500 and cross sectional area uh, that means 78,500 by 250 into 462 that is equals to that means tau V equals to 0 0.68 MPa now design shear strength uh, of concrete look uh, concrete also takes shear strength but the excess shear strength is have to carry by reinforcement so this is this uh, excess value is carried by shear reinforcement so first of all that's why first of all we have to find out how much amount of shear stress uh, concrete may carry excess value for excess value we have to design shear reinforcement um, so for this also we have to go to IS code table number 19 uh, so uh, first uh, let's let's go to uh, table number 19 okay this is table number 19 design shear strength of concrete the tau c in Newton per mm square or MPa so from this table we have to find out the shear strength of concrete how much it may carry so in first column goal number one this is percentage of steel look formula is given just above the table 100 into AS or AST by BD so our percentage of steel in this case is 0.8 so here 0.8 is not given you can see but 0.75 is given and 1 is given so for this two percentage we have to check with the help of grade of concrete the shear strength of concrete tau c so 4.75 you can see an m25 grade concrete tau c is 0 0.57 and for one percentage and m25 concrete uh, value of tau c is 0 0.64 so point is is it is definitely lies between these two value and again like uh, modification factor uh, we have to interpolate and find out the value of tau c for 0.8 percentage of steel and m25 concrete so uh, from table number 19 of is 456 2000 uh, we have take a value for percentage of steel uh, 0 0.75 the tau c for 0 0.75 is 0 0.57 and tau c uh, for uh, percentage of steel 1 is 0 0.64 so we have these two value and uh, for percentage of steel 0.8 the value should be lies between this so from interpolation we, uh, we may find out the value so for interpolation so tau c is equals to 0 0.57 plus um, within bracket 0 0.65 minus 0 0.57 bracket close by 
within bracket 1 minus 0 0.75 bracket close multiplied by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.75. So, the ultimately the value of tau c is 0 0.58. Uh, this value is less than tau c max that is 3.1. The value of tau c max is given in table number 20 of IS 456-2000 for M25 concrete the value of tau c max is 3.1 the maximum value of tau c that means tau c max is 3.1. So, our value tau c is 0.58 that is uh, less than tau c max. So, um, uh, so this is okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so, as uh, tau v is greater than tau c, therefore, shear reinforcement is required. If tau v is less than tau c, in that case, no shear reinforcement is required syrup is uh, given in convenient method. But in this case tau b is greater than tau c. That means for this excess value we have to design shear reinforcement. Okay. Uh, so, shear to be carried out by reinforcement um, that is uh, v u s. So, v u s is v u minus tau c into b d. So, tau c into b d means uh, the shear carried by the cross section that means by the concrete. So, the excess value V E U S which have to carried by reinforcement that is 11510 Newton. So, using 8 mm dia 2 legged stirrup now A S V that means area of stirrup is 2 into pi by 4 into 8 square that is equals to 100.53 mm square. So, now spacing of stirrup. So, maximum spacing of stirrup the formula you may find out from clause number 26.5.1.6. Um, open your IS code book and uh, uh, open this clause number, you uh, find out this formula. Okay. So, SV is equals to 0 0.87 into ASV into FY by 0 0.4 into B. So, that is equals to if we put the every value here, the spacing is 362. So, now uh, the, we have to select the spacing. The spacing should be list up at a 0 0.75 d that means 0 0.75 into effective depth that is 462 that is equal to 46 300 and what we have find out that is 362. So, the spacing should be list of 3. So, list value is 300 mm that is why we provide 8 mm 2 legged stirrup at 300 mm center to center distance throughout the length of the beam. Okay. Now, the last check, the check for development length. To check this, we have to use codal provisions obviously. So, first check the uh, codal provisions. Let us go to code. So, as per clause number 26.2.1 of IS 456-2000, the development length of bars is given by LD, L suffix D and that is equals to phi into sigma s by 4 tau bt. So, phi we know the diameter of bar, sigma s is stress in bar at the section considered at design load, but sigma is this abbreviation we use for working stress method, but in case of limit state method. Instead of this, we use Fy by gamma and value of tau bd is given in 26.2.1.1. Let us check the value of tau bd. The value of tau bd for M25 concrete is 1.4 as per this clause and the checking the final condition for development length is we may find out from here m1 by v, v means v u plus l0 that should be greater than l d that means that should be greater than development length. This is the checking, this is written actually here l d is computed uh, for f d does not exceed this value ok m1 by v plus l0 that means this should be greater than l d. So, let us check in our solution. So, uh, to find out the value first um, 
find out uh, the value of m1 that is equals to 0 0.87 fy ast into d within bracket 1 minus ast fy by bd fck you know the value comes from nxg of is 426-2000. So, if we put every value here we may get the value of m1 moment that is equals to 13585698 newton and uh, value of u is uh, already we have that is equals to 78500 newton and uh, using no bend in this case uh, we assume that we use no bend or hook uh, so l0 is equals to 0 so now the uh, equation we have seen in is code m1 by v by plus l0 that is equals to if you put the values that is equals to 1730 mm right and now uh, let us check the value of uh, ld uh, that is equals to as per formula phi uh, into sigma st by um, 4 tau bd uh, that is equals to phi fy by gamma m for limited method by 4 tau bd if we put the values uh, values in this equation as we know the, the value of tau bg from uh, clause number 26.2 we have already seen in is code the ultimately the value of ld after total calculation is 1289.5 mm so it is uh, it's clear that uh, mu uh, m1 plus vu plus l0 is greater than ld hence codal uh, requirement is satisfied that means it is also safe and okay in uh, development length check so design is complete now we have to write out ultimately what we have uh, get the design data we have get from this design after all checking completed the design data here is the design data so uh, size of beam is 250 mm by 500 mm main tensile bars is three number of 20 mm um, uh, dia bar of AFE 415 grade steel shear reinforcement that means stir up is 8 mm dia 2 leg stir up at the rate 300 mm center to center and anchor bars um, uh, we may provide two numbers of 10 mm dia bars okay. so this is the design data from this design data we have to now draw the longitudinal section and cross section of the beam okay. so let us uh, check the drawing so now um, you can see in your screen the longitudinal section and cross section after the design with all design data uh, so we have um, draw here uh, longitudinal section showing the stirrups uh, and show, showing the stirrups and the spacing of stirrups um, and uh, bearing of wall uh, you should also draw the center to center distance clear uh, center to center distance of beam uh, that means effective length and in cross section the uh, in cross section view uh, there is already uh, uh, that is marked the tension mem uh, tension bars that there, there is three number of 20 mm dia tension bar um, and uh, two numbers of anchor bar here so uh, the whatever we get from design we get in design data we have to draw this okay so just see the drawing and draw it so here the design of single reinforced beam is complete as per question and i hope you have enjoyed that so this is how to design single reinforced beam by limit state method that's all for this lecture thank you